put together this video showing uh, our, how to put the kit together once she received it. This is most of the pieces. There's some pieces that's not gonna be showed here, but this is gonna give you an idea of the main part. That's the one inch solid rod goes in that front piece. Now this piece is not gonna be on here. We just have it on for, for show right now, but that bolts in right there at that hinge joint on each side. And you see where the tie rod goes that hangs down for attaching to your bike. Yes. You have this back piece attaches to the two sides. The two sides now will come to you looking just like this, already welded together here. And yes, it will come to an end here for this back piece to slide on each side. He's going to show us how it's going to, how we do that. And uh, it, what's really unique about this new feature he's come up with is that it's going to make the width very adjustable. If you've got a really small, narrow bike, uh, you can make it as narrow as 26 inches uh, from side to side or as wide as 34 inches like for the gold wings to open the saddlebags good so this is really a huge update he's come up with on the kits and then so once you get this position where you want it and make sure that back piece is centered to the two sides then you've got these set screws that come in here. You see this one is still on here. Here's a close-up of the set screw. It's a countersunk. Counter set screw. And so here you'll want to take a 3 8 inch drill and go and countersink a little hole for the set screw to, to go into when you uh, use your red Loctite and put the set screw in. You'll do one on each side countersinking, and then the other one you can just tighten really, really tight. Put all your set screws in and Loctite it on and countersunk and everything. This is how you're going to attach to the mounting bar that comes down on the back from your bike and you will it'll it'll fall somewhere in this area and you drill the holes mark your holes for the u-bolts and it'll take two u-bolts on each side for each of your mounting kits and then you'll put lock tight on the nuts and then you have a jam nut that'll go with it is uh, being shipped out to go on an ultra and he ordered running boards and bumpers so that's why you're going to see the bumper on this and you also see the name plate there um, the gold wing bites do not get a name plate on them because they're they're just not seen the way they're made but most bikes do get the name plate on them and this is showing how we welded the bumper to this back piece. The back piece is a separate piece to the, from the sides. We just got this back in and we're looking at where we want to attach to it at. And so if you're looking to have a econo trike or a trip trike uh, shipped to you, this is the some of the things you'll need to look for ahead of time. And that is where are we going to attach at the back? And on this situation, 
you see these two bolts here. And that would be where we'd be attaching to. For example, on this bike, this part here pulled out enough to fit our part between it and the frame. On this bike, the frame happens to be on the outside, which is very unusual. So we can uh, see exactly how we want to attach to this bike. The other one will go in behind this part the same way as that. And we'll have two of these tabs hanging down for our part to fit in through that will come down and there you go. We're looking at the front of this bike and as you can see, there really wasn't an existing boat that we could use to attach to. So on this particular bike, we're gonna be able to use you boats on here. No. No. So on the front of this bike, well, there was no existing boat to use. So we're going to have to U-boat to the frame here with a special made bracket for the tie rod in to hang down for it to attach to. Check between these two bolts that you're going to use and as it turns out, this one is perfectly level on the money. So the holes for the, the steel tab will be drilled the same in the same place. Sometimes one bolt will be higher in the back one or the other one lower. And in that case, the hole will be drilled different on these pieces setting up your tabs on your uh, rear frame you need to make sure they don't come down and get into anything like your swing arm these up to where they're level That's right on right there. Now we're ready to mark these off. And there's your hole here. Have those to make a pattern for the other side also. You will need to determine what size these bolts are and uh, replace them with uh, one about a quarter of an inch or so longer to allow for the fitting of our part in between. Okay, here are the parts put on the back fender. As you can see, we replaced the existing bolts with a grade eight bolt the same size. And be sure and put Loctite, red Loctite, on your threads of your bolt. four inches from the floor. And it helps to have a grease pencil on hand, a white grease pencil for marking on the steel and stuff. As you can see, you've got a good bit of excess here. It can stay on there or you can trim it wherever you'd like if you want to trim that off, but it's not hurting anything on there. On some bikes, as you can see, we've got this tab with this coming outward. 
Some bikes that may fit better to turn it around where that's on the inside. And the same thing with this part. Well, it can be, it's universal of side to side right here that fits into this. Every bike's a little different, so this is just how it is on this bike. Show you how we're attached to the front on this Harley. Uh, this is a trip trike kit, but the same goes for Econo trike as far as how it attaches. Now, on this bike, the way it was up front, there wasn't an existing boat, so we had to make this bracket. Whoops, where am I? Okay, this bracket and it's u-bolted to the frame of the bike and it goes all the way under and will be on the other side as well and then and you got the main thing is to make sure that this bar one inch square bar right here has a space between the bracket that's why we have these washers as spacers spacing out the thyroid end so that there's space between the bracket and the kit. And then as you can see, this is how it's set up for this. This is showing how there's just not, there's little space here. He had to, whoops. He had to uh, drill this hole in this tab down low on this side because of this would have been in the way had he had the hole up in the top of this tab. That makes it universal.
rubber glove. And what are we doing? Grazing. You want to work the grease into the bearing good. And what kind of grease is it that we need? Any kind of bearing grease. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you might need that. And then this goes in here. Like so. okay. I don't particularly like this grease, it's too stringy. Yeah, it's like honey. Yeah. <clears throat> then you put the seal on there. Any kind of bearing grease will work. Yeah. You got the seal on and it. And this it's... little wood block. And I always look here, the hole on this was like about 10 o'clock. I, I put, <clears throat> I do it like that where I remember it. <laughs> but once you get the grease on, you can't see the hole sometimes, but you can feel it. That's the hole for the quarter pin. Okay. Input washer. Washer. And put a net. I gotta get a wrench to tighten that net. <clears throat> Let me get a wrench. And you tighten this. Sometimes you can do it in hand. And what you want to do is tighten it to where this becomes hard to turn. That's I'm going to turn that slot back there to the the 10 o'clock setting. <laughs> and then you know where to put your pen. Now I gotta get a little needle nose.
Then you just take it and catch it like right there. Bend that around. Then it's... That's the closer pan. Yes, then it's finished to remove the cap. You can take this off. It feels pretty tight just because of the grease that's cold. Yeah. Pictures run a little bit, it'll be fine. Once there's a line, you mark this right here on both sides. And see how nice so you that, to put this. Uh oh, it's having to mark from it. underneath. But I show you back on this side what we're marking is this mark right here, so that this you know where this is supposed to be at all times, and it gets tightened down there. But we took the measurement of the front wheel, which was three and a quarter inches, and the back wheel was seven inches. We, did, we deducted three and a quarter from seven, which left three and three quarters. And then what? Three and three quarters was the difference. Subtracted three from seven, which leaves four, but then it was a quarter, so that left three and three quarters. So when you deducted the three and a quarter from the seven inches, it was left three and three quarters, which half of that is one and seven eighths. So the difference here is, is the, the front will need to be. It was 23 on the back, so no, the back, it was 23 and a quarter on the back. Back measurement was 23 and a quarter. So if we do 23 and a quarter plus one and seven eighths, that'd be 23. Oh, this gets complicated. 23, 24 and a quarter plus three-eighths. So that makes it five-eighths. 24 and five-eighths should be your measurement here on the front from the tire. 
over to your straight edge. And we mark it with just a piece of steel so that we know where it's at. Be 24 and 7 eighths. No, 24 and 5 eighths. 24 and 5 eighths. And that tells you where you need your straight board to line up with. And what we're doing here is aligning the kit to the motorcycle. So then he holds the board, straight board, put it right there against that, and then align it. And if it's touching front and back on this it's tire, still perfect. It's then it's, it's perfect. And that's how you align the bike. You get that measurement from your tire to the straight board on the back come to the front, get the measurement from the straight board to that back measurement plus the and one and seven eighths to added to it. And to that board. straight board needs to touch the tire on, on the back and the front there and that gives you your straight line for your alignment. Also, while doing this, you're going to need to make sure that your back stays centered with your wheel. As you can see, it's got a little mark there for the center, and it's lined up with the center of the wheel. 